and welcome to our election road trip where we're exploring the major themes of the upcoming French presidential election. Today we're heading south to the port city of Marseille. <laughs> in Marseille, just in front of the Musem, a museum dedicated to European and Mediterranean civilizations. Marseille is France's second largest city and for centuries a melting pot of different cultures. If we're talking about a candidate who's strong on culture, well, to be honest, I'm not sure that anyone really stands out. <laughs> People coming here from outside need to be telling the people living here, the charities working here, that what they have is exciting, of value. France is known around the world for its art, cinema and literature, and the sector is a huge contributor to the public purse here. But what future for French culture after two years of Covid? The idea of the French cultural exception has been promoted by France since the 1980s and is based on a conviction that cultural goods and experiences can't be treated as ordinary commodities. That doesn't mean ignoring the cash that culture can generate, simply that the value of culture shouldn't be determined by the free market. In France, the cultural sector directly employs some 670,000 people and receives significant subsidies, both from the state and regional authorities. This year, the culture ministry's budget is on course to surpass 4 billion euros for the first time, up 7.5% on 2021 spending. Behind that unprecedented sum, a concerted effort to protect a sector that's been dealt a hammer blow by the COVID-19 health crisis, with cash now earmarked for live performance venues, heritage sites, cinema and broadcasting. But that money doesn't include state compensation for the cultural outfits that lost out during the crisis, or even unemployment benefits for the artists and technicians still struggling to work as much as they did pre-pandemic. For years, Marseille has attracted people keen to enjoy the benefits of a vibrant, dynamic city. Voters here are weighing up their options. I really think that culture is like therapy. So if a presidential candidate doesn't recognize that in their manifesto, well, that wouldn't exactly motivate me to vote for them. La campagne... This election is very complicated for me. And if we're talking about a candidate who's strong on culture, well, to be honest, I'm not sure that anyone really stands out. Culture helps us improve ourselves. It's something we grow up with. And the fact that there's not a huge amount of access to culture, well, that can limit your options. It can put the brakes on. If it's not me imparting that culture and those opportunities onto my children, then I'm not sure who will. Of the six major French cities, Marseille is the poorest, with residents twice as likely to live in poverty as those in Paris. Much of the city's deprivation is concentrated here in Marseille's northern neighborhoods, and access to cultural activities here can be complicated. We're meeting Salim Grabsi, social activist and member of the Celle de la Vie charity. Salim Grabsi, why is it that Marseille's northern neighborhoods suffer from cultural isolation, in your opinion? This cultural isolation stems from the fact that for decades there's been a real political desire to not bring more classical forms of culture to these areas. That's because historically there's been a lot of disdain for the people who lived there. These neighborhoods have a huge amount of potential, there's cultural and ethnic diversity which if harnessed would do wonders for the image people have of Marseille. 
Recently, President Macron visited Marseille and he promised to invest one and a half billion euros in housing, education, infrastructure. Is that going to be enough? It's enough, but on one key condition. The right people need to be making the decisions. When people want to fix an area, repair something that's broken, often the ingredients for that are already there. I mean the residents and charities in the area. You need to make the most of what's already in place. Money really isn't everything. Of course you do need cash, but you also need the right people. People who aren't looking for quick fixes, people ready to work in the medium and long term to really breathe new life into these areas. Money isn't everything. And there are a lot of charities working here in Marseille's northern neighbourhoods. Do you think they're working to help democratise culture here? Everything depends on what we mean by the word culture. If we're talking about Mozart or 18th century stuff like Beethoven, then there's still a big gap. But today we're in the 21st century. There are cultures here from around the world. Marseille is a truly international city and it's a shame to ignore that diversity. People who want to do things properly need to work hand in hand with those organizations, those charities and also local residents. Because those are the people who carry these local cultures. Cultures old and new, cultures that come from far and wide. With all that, we could create a sort of UFO culture, an unidentified flying object. What concretely for you are the most important things that need to be done to improve access to culture here in Marseille? It's a big question and it's going to take time. It's not something we're going to solve in two years, more like ten. There's a real divide between Marseille centre and the northern neighbourhoods. That divide extends to public transport. We need to make sure that young people feel they have a real claim to culture. We need to do what we can to stop residents in underprivileged areas self-censoring to help banish that self-censorship. People coming here from outside need to be telling the people living here, the charities working here, that what they have is exciting, of value. They need to make it clear that their intention is to build something with these people. Salim Krabsi, thank you so much for answering our questions here in Marseille's uh, northern neighbourhoods. Thank you very much. Behind me is the Marseille Philharmonic Orchestra, for many a quintessential symbol of elite culture. In a bid to change that perception, the orchestra's musicians have launched a project that works to introduce children from underprivileged neighbourhoods to classical music. Karina Chabot reports. Welcome to Malpasse, a district in the north of Marseille. For a month now, twice a week, the work here has been on rhythm. It's the first step before actual instruments. Each child has already made their choice. The violon, l'alto, la contrebasse. The violon. The violon. And you? Me, it's the contrebass. The violon. Le violon aussi. Et la contrebasse, le violon. Ça, c'est le mic. Soon enough, each of these little musicians will become part of the Demos Orchestra. These are children who haven't at all been anywhere there would have been classical music. It's great to see just how music can help them find their way in the world, and within a symphony orchestra too. With the Demos Orchestra, everything's free, with the only obligation to make a three-year commitment. Her brother was really happy to take part in the Demos project. Now he'd like to try other instruments, so I'll see if I can find lessons. That's easier said than done. Lessons and teachers here are hard to find. Alexei is one of the children who followed the whole course. Since then, he's not just kept up the double bass, but started on the piano and the guitar as well. He dreams of setting foot in the limelight once more, after playing in a concert last June in the city centre. <laughs> After all these years, I've become a real double bassist. 
il a pris en assurance. It's given him confidence. It's reassuring. You can see he's learned things and he's really happy. There's less stress when facing new situations. There was this integration. That's what the group was about. I was really happy, but I was sad when I had to leave Demos. Now, though, it might just run in the family, with Alexei's little brother Julian looking to get into music too. That brings us to the end of this episode of our election road trip. Now it's time to leave the sea and we're heading to the very heart of rural France.